Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Today we're going to try something a little bit different. A few videos back I bought a load of soap making supplies and I put out on the channel that I'm kind of getting into it uh, and there seemed to be a fair amount of interest actually with people wanting to know what the process is all about and how it works. So today I'm going to make a simple soap that you can make at home with ingredients from the supermarket apart from two things which I've got from that order but they're really not necessary uh, one of them is a couple of mica colours so these are mica clay colour colours that will help uh, change the colour of the soap and because they're a clay powder then uh, I think it's clay it's a type of clay anyway mica then it's colour fast it's, it's not going to change too much with any chemicals and then secondly we've got some aroma yes I know it looks like a a nip of Hennessy or something like that but it's not this is mango fragrance and I bought this from the soup soap kitchen soup kitchen so let's uh, focus on the ingredients and I'll talk you through the process a little bit so here we are on the cooker and uh, I've got a soap recipe here I've already made one of these today uh, but the filming didn't go quite well so uh, we're coming back to do it again only this time instead of it says cherry berry fragrance which is what we used on the other soap we're going to be using the mango fragrance in this one so the oils that we use uh, all bring different qualities to the soap like hardness uh, whether they provide a lather whether they cleanse and the uh, sodium hydroxide is what saponifies those oils so that they're not greasy on your skin anymore or they're not grease basically so here's a quick look at the recipe you guys will have to just pause it if you want to kind of take it in a little bit but basically uh, there's lots of info out there on soap making this is a recipe I know will work so I'm not going to go into too much detail about the pros and cons of super fatting and lye concentrations that's for another video today we're going to show you something really simple so you need to have a ratio of at least 50% water to 50% sodium hydroxide we've gone for 40% sodium hydroxide 60% water today so that means that it's not going to speed the soap up quite as much I've mixed the water and the sodium hydroxide together in here so we have two 214 grams of water and 142 grams of sodium hydroxide and then I've let this cool and I put it in the fridge till it gets you know it, it's about 18 degrees C or something like that at the moment the mixture of oils the mixture of oils that we're going to be using today I've already melted down this again is at room temperature as well we have uh, 400 grams of olive oil this is regular supermarket olive oil it says Tesco on it there then we've got 400 grams of lard just your normal lard from the supermarket and then 200 grams of coconut oil this is Tesco's version but other supermarkets have their own brands here's one that I've used recently I think this is available from Morrison's so these are all oils that you can get from the supermarket so what we need to do essentially is add our lye to our oils and then mix it with a hand blender and the idea is we want to create an emulsification because soap is a sodium salt of oil effectively I believe that's how it's described so once we've mixed this and it starts to thicken which is something known as trace then we're going to pour it into a mould. I have a wooden mould here that I made from scrap wood at work and I've just lined it with baking paper. You can of course use something like this, this is what I started in. This is just a silicon cake mould. You can see it's still got some soap around the edge there. So we're going to go ahead and make soap. So here we go. I'm going to get my stick blender and I'm going to first just make sure there's no bubbles in there and then I'm going to blend these oils together 
so they are nicely blended. We've got three different oils as I say in here so that's those done and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide and then I'm going to add the colorant, uh, the fragrance, sorry then I'm going to split the batch into two and I'm going to add different colorants to each one so we can have a layered effect in the soap mold so it looks like it's green at the bottom and orange at the top like a mango that's the idea so I'm happy that that is emulsified so here we go with the sodium hydroxide that's a little bit of it we'll just blend that in it's a warm day today so I have to be careful that we don't accelerate this batch too much because it is a real danger right and that looks like it's behaving sometimes you can add your ingredients like the aromas and they can speed up the whole process and before you know it your soap's starting to set in your mixing bowl so I'm afraid that uh, that's what m that might be what's going to happen when I put the aroma in so we're going to split the batch a little bit now so that is going to be our green base if you like so what we will do if this won't fall over I'm hoping it doesn't there we go we're going to add a little bit of this green mica to the soap base to the batter that's what they call this now in this state it's called a batter so normally you'd mix this in a little bit of oil first which is perhaps what I should do before we go ahead I don't want to inadvertently mess it up so there we go a little bit of the batter in there then we'll just add some of this green mica powder that's a good teaspoon I've probably over egged the pudding a little bit there then what we're going to do is just blend this mica powder into this batter it is summer folks you'll be able to hear the kids outside roping there we go that's a beautiful green actually it's very shimmery and then what we're going to do is I'm going to try I probably messed this up so let's just get this out of the way I want to make sure that I don't spill anything here we'll just pour this green colorant into the batter scoop a little bit up get the rest of it out there we go that's looking good and we've got 95 percent of it out there anyway yep that'll do and then what we're going to do is go ahead and continue with blitzing it there we go that's looking very good so now I'm going to also add uh, a fair amount of the fragrance probably about 40% and this may accelerate the whole thing as well so I'm keeping an eye on it and what we're looking for is to hit what's known, what's known as trace oh 
but we're doing all right at the minute. There we go, and I think we're beginning to achieve trace now. Can you see how it kind of, when I drip it on the top, kind of sits on the surface like a, like a custard. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting thicker now, you can definitely tell. So I'm going to keep blending this for a second or two longer until it thickens up. I just have to change the battery in the camera there. But yeah, if you look at that now, it's looking really quite thick. You see how it's holding its shape on the surface? So what we're going to do is try and get most of the soap off the spatula, or the spatula, the blender. And then we'll pop that into the other piece of batter. And this now is gonna make the base of our, our green and orange soap. So we're just going to pull all this out into the mould. Try and get most of it out. Chance, what's wrong, son? Will you bugger off? I hear him tiptoeing backwards and forwards constantly. There we go. This one's looking better, Gem. This is setting up nicely. Right, so we're going to try and distribute it as evenly as possible in the bottom of the mould. And I think, get it into those corners there. That's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to try and... Uh, brush it out. I've gone for a relatively thick trace like this because the next part of the process is to pour the rest of the soap on the top so we want this to start setting up so they don't blend into each other. So what I'm doing now is just a few swirls to try and A level the whole thing out and B, provide an area for a little bit of blending to go ahead. But we don't want it to be completely blended. And I'm being careful not to get any on the sides. So we'll go around and we'll scrape that so we end up with a nice separate colours on the side of the mould. This is something that you really don't have to do. You can get it to a light trace and pour it straight in the mould. But because I want to put a fancy paint pattern on it, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna stand this to one side now. That's gonna set up for five or 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and we're gonna work on this batter, which is still relatively liquid in comparison. So I'm just gonna clean my things down and we'll come back and uh, do that. So whilst we're waiting for that green soap to set up, We'll go ahead and uh, pop a little bit of this orange mica into a bit of the batter that we've poured out already. And we want a nice, sharp, vibrant colour. So that looks like a good amount. So you can add as many uh, different colours like this as you really want in different layers. It all depends how much time you want to spend doing it and effectively what you want to achieve from the uh, on the final article. Look at the colour, that is an orange orange. 
the camera's not giving it doing it much justice, but that is orange. Jesus. Really orange. Right, so I'm gonna add this now to uh, the majority of the batter. In it goes. And then this time, I think what I will do is try and utilize the fragrance oil to maybe dissolve the rest of it and get that out as well. There we are. Yeah, there's some lumps in there now, so it looks like that fragrance oil does accelerate the accelerate the batter slightly. So let's get this on. And let's get it blended up. Come on. There we go. Get it in shot for you guys. I'm just gonna get a towel. I've got a little bit of the batter on my hands. But yes, it's a beautiful, vibrant orange. Really is nice. And with this one, we're only gonna take it to a light trace because I want this to be really quite pourable. colour. On the camera it looks like Heinz tomato soup but it's much more vibrant than that in real life. So now I'm just going to get a big spatula and the small one. So we'll use the small one for scraping it off the stick blender because we have reached trace you should be able to see on the top of that batter there that it started to go a little bit firmer. So let's just disconnect the body. There we go. Much easier like this because I'm right handed. I can fly through it now before it sets up too quickly. It's a warm day so the chances of this going off are pretty high. It does tend to, the heat does tend to affect exactly what's happening with these soaps. I think we've got enough of that off there. There we go. That's looking really good. So we're gonna bring in the mold again. And as you'll see, that's pretty firm in there now, already pretty firm. So what I want to do is just pour all of this beautiful orange batter on the back of the ladle to prevent, to prevent it breaking through the green layer, should it want to. I don't think we're going to need the big spatula, are we? Looking at it, I might be able to get my, get my hands in with this one which is perfect. Oh, there we go. This mango smells fantastic by the way. And there we go. I think we've got most of that out. So all we need to do is just kind of give her a jiggle, get her leveled up. And then for this soap, I would like to have a real smooth surface on the top. Some people go in 
and do the patterns like I did on the other one but I don't think I'm going to do it on this one I'm tempted always tempted but I'm just going to leave it nice and flat like that so we'll let that set for maybe six or seven hours sometimes you have to leave it overnight and then we'll see if we can come back and unmold it but there we go that basically is how you make soap folks so welcome back folks it's been just a few seconds for you but it's been a whole afternoon for me and in fact I went ahead and made another two soaps so this one is a lemon scented this one's a lemon scented soap which uses a different characteristic of oil it's got some shea butter in it this is the one that you saw us make earlier on as you can see the colour has changed a little bit on the surface which is odd so we've got a bit of yellow in there don't know where that's come from maybe it'll disappear and then this is the one that I actually made before I made the one before which uh, we had a bit of a volcano so the soap was too hot and it began to boil in its mold foamed up so I had to mix it and then reseat it but we saved it and it's worked out all right so what we're going to do because we're going to the coast tomorrow is we're going to unmold the mango soap which we made on camera earlier on so I'm just going to peel off the masking tape that we've got on the sides here holding the mold in position and you guys are lucky because by the magic of video editing you get to see this process in a matter of minutes instead of hours so here we go and that's the soap out the mold I'm hoping that I'm in focus here because I've had a bit of a problem the past day or two with this camera mainly me not paying any attention and I've just had a mosquito near my ear so this is the soap out of the mold I'm battling an invasion of mosquitoes in here as well I've just cooked so just drawing all the little beasties in from outside and wow look at that would you look at that effect so we were going for something that looked a little bit like a mango and well what we've ended up with is pinks yellows and a solid green on the base I think that looks really good I'm happy with it so what I'm going to do is just pop it back on the paper and then we're going to cut this into bars while it's still soft and supple so what I've got on one of the moulds it's probably this one is yeah so let's just unmold this one quickly I've got some lines marked out on the underneath of the mould so I can see how big the bars want to be and that one's come out alright shall we have a peek at it may as well while you're here oh there we go this one is the cherry berry and while we've got a few voids in there it still worked out really nice anyway we'll put that soap to one side I'm going to flip this box over and we're going to stick the soap on top of it and then we're just going to go ahead line it up on one edge and you can see I've got increments marked out on here so we're going to go ahead uh, with a knife and cut the bars. Hey Abby, you I'm like this one? Like it's meant to be a mango, but the red's not as dark as I thought it would be. Does it smell like anything? It smells so good. It does smell good, doesn't it? Okay, I'm keeping. Can I have. Do you know when I got my own room? Yeah. Could you maybe make another one like that? Maybe, yes. Um, Let me just move some of this stuff out of the way, sweetheart. If I have my own sink, I want that soap in it. Well, you can have some of this soap upstairs. Yes. Should I bring some up? 
Now it's not ready for a few weeks yet. No. So we're going to cut it and we're going to see what it looks like inside. What's this one? That's lemon. Smells good. Do you know when you're doing the patterns? Can I do There we go. Like so we did get we did get the green and yellow. Darling. It's like mango. Do you yes, know darling. Can I do the patterns again? Could I do it with you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cuz I want to do like a heart pattern. Okay. Like where I use like maybe a toothpick or something. That might be difficult, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure something out. <laughs> I'll try me. I'll I might, I'll just try. So we're getting close with these bars. They're not oh, look, there's a mosquito here. You could stack it like Can you see jungle. that mosquito trying to bite ah. me? <laughs> Chance Maybe. Chance might get it's it. Gonna your legs. Is it? Oh. Yeah, I just got away. You keep batting it away for me. I don't want it to suck my blood. Right, anyway, back to the soap. This has come out really nice. And the aroma on it is delicious. So this smells of mango. Abby's having a sniff of the cherry berry one. And that's really nice as well, isn't it, Abs? Where is that mosquito? So we're just cutting the... We should get about 13 bars out uh, of uh, a kilogram of oil. And uh, that's why I go for the, the kilo recipe, because everything's pretty much uh, already weighed out for you in one respect because if you're having a kilo of oil and 40% of a particular oil we know it's going to be 400 grams Dad? Yes darling? You're like doing it as Jenga Yeah, Jenga but with two blocks instead. With soap, Jenga soap <laughs> And with two blocks So there we go So that's the soap folks That's what you saw me make this afternoon they're the colours that we've got. Like I said, the colours are absolutely unnecessary, but as you can see, it looks really cool. You want to cut the lemon one as well, do you, sweetheart? Right, well, while we've got your attention on the video, see me. chaps. They can't even see me. No, because you're, you're in your gym jams, aren't you? You're off camera, sweetie. It is uh, getting yeah, late. LOL one. Right then. Just for I, the sake of the video. I Wave. Those who want to stick around. Can I wave at them? Yeah, you can wave. Hello. There we go, there's Abby waving. <laughs> and I did my nails at Becky's. Oh, she's done her nails as well. Your nails are more colourful than the soap is. What's more colourful? My nails or the soap? Oh, right. So. You can let them see. There we go. That was a bit tricky to get out of that mould. But we've done it. <laughs> so this. It's the lemon soap, and this has got shea butter in it, like so it's really it. good for your skin. I want to smell it again. Oh, can you smell that, that Abs? So good. So this is the uh, the bar, the giant bar, and it does smell really nice. I must admit. Okay, chicken. Bye bye. So let's see how this cuts. So sometimes when you do one of these soaps, what will happen? is as the soap goes through the saponification process the uh, the heat can cause the colours to change a little bit so it goes through what's known as a gelling phase and the gelling phase is obviously when all of the uh, chemicals are doing their bit and it's an exothermic reaction and sometimes that heat given off uh, tends to spread out from the in inside of the bar giving you a kind of a uh, an orbit if you like or a ring of you can't really see it on this one so this has gelled really nicely but yeah sometimes you can notice it and around the edges you'll have like darker spots where the colour has changed due to the heat process. It doesn't affect the soap at all, you'll be pleased to know. It only affects 
its appearance. So I wouldn't worry about it if it happens, but I do know that some of them are professional soap makers, particularly on YouTube, like Royalty Soaps, whose videos I have been watching, they wouldn't accept something like that because they're a commercial business and they obviously want to retail their soaps to their customers across the United States. I think they're in the States. Yes, I think they are. So they want to make sure that the soaps are perfect every time. And some of their soaps are something different. They're really, really well decorated. So this soap now it's been cut and uh, stacked is going to take four to six weeks of curing time and that's essentially where all the water is going to come out of the soap and the saponification process is going to continue until all the oil has been used up by the sodium hydroxide and what we'll be left with is a beautiful soap Here's a little bit of that process that I was trying to talk to you about earlier on. You see the slight colour change on the edge there. That's something that's caused by the gel phase. So with cold process soap you do have to wait for this curing time to finish up. Which like I say is about four to six weeks. But with hot process soap, which is almost what this bar turned into, you can, uh, you can use it almost immediately. So the reason I'm cutting all these soaps now is because after a few days they're going to become really quite hard and I don't know if I'll be able to get a knife through them or not. So because we're going away tomorrow for a couple of days, well just a day really, at the coast, I don't want to risk coming back and then cracking the soaps as I try and cut them so we may as well may as well do them all on camera now like I say we're just cutting the soaps there's probably nothing more than me waffling on so if you want to just skip the video to tomorrow's vlog or something that's fine with me but I'm just curious every time I cut one of these soaps it's like fossil hunting you see I had some real problems with this soap and I did think that it was going to cause lots of air bubbles in the center but even scraping the knife down there you can see actually how hard it is already so even though we had a bit of a volcano which ruined the top surface of the soap everywhere else is fine so we've got away with that a little bit and like Abigail said this cherry berry uh, scent on this one is fantastic but like I said at the start of the video folks you do not have to add scents if you don't want to of course it smells nicer if you do and you do not have to add colours if you're just wanting to make your own soap for cleansing purposes but when you've got a daughter like I do you know anything to encourage them to keep clean <laughs> is always a good thing so here we go we're coming to the end of this loaf and I am actually really pleased how they've all turned out so there we go We've got uh, 13, 12, 24, 36, 7, 8, 9, 39, 39 bars of soap made in just an afternoon. That'll keep us going for a long time. But yeah, I'm particularly impressed with those little beauties. So there we go, folks. Thanks for watching. And, uh, well, we might be back in the brewery on Monday doing some more work on a pilot kit, if that's what you've come for. Cheers. We'll see you on the next one.